Hey, I'm Matt from mastersketchup.com and this is video number four in the medicine cabinet walkthrough video series. So in this video, we're gonna be creating the door on the medicine cabinet. So you'll continue to practice some of the basic tools that we learned in the previous videos and you're gonna learn some new things such as how to mirror a component, how to use the tape measure tool, how to make components unique once you've already created multiple copies of them and a bunch of other things. So let's go ahead and dive right in and if you need a link to a model to follow along in this video, you can uh, check out the description below. And if you've missed some of the previous videos, those links will be in the description as well. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so let's go ahead and create the door. So we'll grab the rectangle tool and we'll start right at this corner. We'll click once and we'll click again and we'll type in three inches comma three quarter enter so this is going to be the style and we'll use the push pull tool the letter p we'll snap that up to the top and then we'll triple click right click make component we'll name this style going a little bit faster here because this is basically the same procedure that we use to create everything else and we're going to grab the move tool with the letter m We'll click once. Now don't be afraid to zoom in here to make sure you have a good snap. So I'll click once to snap, zoom zoom out, tap control to copy, and we'll click right over on a point here. We're gonna make sure we rotate this. And by the way, we're gonna keep this whole thing simple. So this connection right here is just gonna be pocket holes. So it'll be pocket screwed to the to the top and bottom piece here and we're going to do the same thing for the door frame and we'll just put a uh, a panel on the inside to cover those pocket holes now we will draw the rails so we're going to click with the rectangle tool and we'll correct that to three inches p for push pull we'll grab that snap over here triple click right click make component we'll call this rail and then M for move, snap to the point, click once to start, tap control, snap at the bottom and click again, and then we'll rotate as well. Now at this point, it would be helpful if we could see the backside of the door more easily because we need to work on the backside of the door to add the mirror and the back panel that I mentioned earlier. So maybe it would make sense to rotate the door so it's in an open position. That way we can work on both sides of the door without the cabinet getting in the way. Now we could select each one of these by holding down the control key while creating a selection in order to select all four of these things and then use the rotate tool, which is the letter Q is found under this menu here. And we could rotate the door out like this. But instead of selecting these individually, it would make a lot more sense to contain these components inside another container. So groups and components can actually contain other copies of groups and components. They don't have to just be loose entities. So by selecting all four of these, I can right click and select make group. So now I have four components nested inside of a group. And now I can just use a single click to select this all at once. And then when I grab the rotate tool, so the rotate tool works by first selecting the pivot point. And before you click, you'll actually notice that the indicator will rotate to snap to you know, certain planes and certain faces in your model. So if you can hover over a face that is aligned to the direction you want to rotate, just hold down the shift key and it'll lock that inference. So when you click, now that rotation will be locked along that axis and then you can click and rotate to whatever angle you want. Alternatively, you can just click and drag. So the first click and hold 
will define the pivot point, but then the direction you drag it will define the rotation axis. So in this case, I'll just you know pull the mouse up and then release, and that locks the plane in place so I can now rotate out. So I just brought that out to 120 degrees. Okay, so I just thought of something. We're gonna be adding a crown molding to this cabinet, but I made the mistake of making the door all the way up to the top of the uh, the side pieces. So I'm not gonna have any room to mount the crown molding. So I think what I'd like to do is bring this piece back three quarters of an inch so I can add a top rail that goes across here and then we can drop the door down and then we know we would have we'll have some room for the crown molding and the door will still close properly so the problem is this piece is identical to these shelves so if we make uh, an edit here it's going to uh, change all of those uh, pieces as well so whenever this happens to you all you need to do is select the component that you want to make unique right click it and select make unique and now this breaks this one component off into a new definition that way you can edit it without affecting the other original copies so I'm gonna just use the push-pull tool we'll bring it in three quarters of an inch and with the select tool I will tap escape so that's another way you can close a component so with the select tool active just tapping escape will will jump you out of there and then we'll just add this new piece here so I'll create this uh, I guess we'll go inch and a half and then push pull bring it across snap to this side and we want to remember to make that into a group and now we just need to edit this door to the new proper height so we'll double click to open the door group but then we also need to double click again to enter this uh, style component now when I use the push pull tool notice how this copy over here is kind of doing the opposite and that's because we rotated this component or maybe maybe this was the original and this was the copy I can't remember but anyways another alternative is using the flip along feature so if I do flip along component blue it has basically inverted this component so now when I edit this one now they are both being manipulated in the same relative direction so I want to bring this down to the midpoint here which is three quarters of an inch and then with the select tool I can click once outside of it and then I just need to select this one grab the move tool with the letter M and then click once click again and we've now made that change so we've brought the door down in order to have some room for the crown molding we've added the top rail and we're good to go okay so let's finish off this door so we need to add the mirror and then we're gonna add a back panel over the styles and rails in order to hide the pocket screws that we'll use to join them so to do the mirror first let's go ahead and jump inside of the door group that we created so with the select tool we'll double click to enter and now anything we draw in here will be contained inside of that group that way if we ever want to rotate it back we'll be able to rotate everything all at once so let's grab the rectangle tool with the letter R and we're gonna create the the mirror is gonna be inset in this opening so we're just gonna click to create this rectangle in here but we don't want the mirror to be the exact size because it's gonna be very hard to get it inside the door frame so we'll actually want to use the offset tool so over here is the offset tool which I activated with the letter F and the offset tool allows you to offset edges from a face or, or selection of edges so in this case I'm just clicking once on the face I'm dragging in and I'll click to finish and I'm just gonna type in 1 8th of an inch and so you can see that offset the faces 1 8th of an inch 
So now what I'll do is I will select this face because this is the face that I want to create my mirror from. I'm going to add it to my clipboard. So control C. So now this face is added to my clipboard. And then I want to get rid of all of this temporary geometry that we just created. So I'll do triple click, one, two, three. That selects that rectangle that we used to offset from. And remember, it doesn't select any of these styles or rails because they are contained within their own components. So that's the one of the big benefits, too, of using groups and components is it, it contains the entities and, and prevents them from sticking to other entities. So once everything's selected here, I'll just tap Delete. And then we're going to paste in place. So you just right-click in Empty Space within the group. You don't want to click out here. And then to paste that face that we copied, you're going to just right click. And instead of just clicking paste, you want to click paste in place. So that will bring this object back in the same physical location that it was copied from. And then now we can use the push pull tool to uh, extrude it. And we'll just go one eighth of an inch enter. So now we have thickness uh, defined for the mirror and it has an eighth inch space all the way around it. So we can triple click this, right click, and make group. So that's gonna be our mirror. And we will use like a you know a little piece of molding around this whole thing. I'm not gonna draw that in this video just to save a little bit of time. But then for the back panel, we'll use a similar process. So we'll create the rectangle here We'll use the offset tool. You might have to just zoom in here a little bit to, to be able to select that face. And we'll create this offset. And actually, since this is a full overlay door, so I just canceled that by tapping escape, I wanna make sure the panel is not gonna interfere with these side rails. So maybe what we could do is use the tape measure tool, which is the letter T, to create a guide so I will, I'm just gonna click on one of these edges here and create a guide at, let's see, three quarters of an inch. So I wanna go, I wanna go at least seven eighths of an inch. And I can have my panel at seven eighths of an inch away from the edge. So now I can grab the offset tool, hover over this face and snap to that edge. So now we can create the back panel. Now, since we already have a rectangle here on our clipboard, let's go ahead and paste in place again. And this time we'll use the scale tool to scale this to the size we want. But before we do that, since we don't know the actual measurement that we need, let's create some guides so we can snap to them. So I'll grab the tape measure tool with the letter T and I'll hover over this edge right here and I'll click once and I want to snap to seven eighths of an inch because I want to make sure that the back panel isn't going to interfere with the uh, sides of the cabinet box. And then I'll create another one down here like this. And then with this rectangle still selected, I'll tap S for the scale tool, which you can find right here. And then I can grab one of these handles. So I'll click once and since when you grab a handle, it'll only affect that one side. So we actually need it to scale both sides. So we'll just hold down control and that will scale both sides at the same time. And I can snap to this guide. And then I'll do the same thing for this bottom handle. So holding down control and click. And then I'll use the push pull tool to extrude that by an eighth inch. And again, triple click. Sometimes if you try to select things that are very thin, they will sometimes select what's behind it. So you might need to zoom in a little bit in order to get a little bit closer. And then you can go ahead and right click and make group. All right, so now that we have a panel on here, these shelves will need to be adjusted because they are flush with the sides of the, the medicine cabinet box. 
and we just put an eighth inch panel here. So we actually need to edit these two as well. And if you remember, this component is the same as these two here. So we need to make these two unique. So we can actually select both of them using the control key, right click, make unique, and now when you double click and use the push pull tool, those two will still remain connected. So we'll push this in a quarter of an inch in order to uh, provide a little bit of space there. And then we'll go ahead and add a bottom piece. So we'll use the rectangle tool to add this bottom piece. This will be three quarters of an inch. And we just made it 3D, so let's triple click and make it into a group. And then we can double click to jump inside to finish editing it. So inside of this, we'll triple click again to select all the entities, and we'll use the scale tool again. So tapping S for the scale tool, and we'll grab this handle right here, and we're gonna scale out, we're gonna hold control, so both sides will move as well. I'm going to click, and instead of typing in a scale factor, I'm gonna type in an absolute dimension. So I know that the box is 23 inches, and I want there to be a three quarter inch overhang on each side. So if I do the math in my head, that's an additional inch and a half. So if I type in 24.5 inch, enter, now the scale tool has restricted or scaled these entities so that this distance between these two red boxes is now that dimension. And then on the front, I can add the uh, three quarter overhang. So I can do three quarters of an inch. And actually that was, <laughs> that was the wrong tool. Um, so if you ever make a mistake, you can just do control Z to undo. Uh, in reality, I just wanted the push pull tool. So P for push pull and click once, click again to finish, three quarters, and we're good to go. All right, so we're almost done with this medicine cabinet. The last thing we need to do is create a crown molding. So we're gonna be doing that in the next video in part five of the medicine cabinet uh, walkthrough video series. So if you need a link to that one, check in the description below. If you're watching this in the playlist, it'll come up right after this video. So I will see you in the next video.